Okay, so let's go through the references. Where are those? So you won't find the references uh, in your folder because uh, those files are all uh, downloaded from the internet and I, I own no right to redistribute them. But uh, you'll find um, uh, a screen copy of service windows. Uh, so you you can refer to, to them later uh, just to, to have an idea. And um, I have to show you website, but wait a minute. Because um, this image started from, uh, from this. And uh, these are references uh, that came from a, from a very, very cool website for artists, which is uh, postspace.com. And uh, postspace.com have those very artistic poses that you can find, and they are all available at, um, at, a, three, at a 360 rotation. Uh, sometimes around uh, you see 24 photo, 26 photo. For example, if I take this one, I'm going to view. Okay, I have that preview. Okay, and you find the same pose rotated all around. And these are beautiful models and uh, beautiful shots. And there is nice lighting. It's 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 already kind of uh, very artistic. So to to study anatomy and uh, to you know to make figure study or to to find to find a a nude pose. This is a really really great resource. And uh, I wanted to do at first a figure study in 3D. That's the thing I I like to do. You know, I just I just take one of those poses and I I'm sculpting in a kind of a 2.5D way. That is, I I'm mainly concerned by when I'm doing that. I'm I'm mainly concerned by the view I'm going to to have from the render, and um, it's kind of nice because because all of the mistakes that you are doing because you are not sculpting in full symmetry and you are sculpting mainly for only one point of view, uh, it's, it, it, gave, it gave a really, really nice uh, artistry feel to, to your sculpt. And uh, I feel it, it is by the end much more natural than, uh, than a sculpting done uh, with full symmetry and, and posed. And uh, also it's, uh, it's way faster because you are not concerned with, with anything else than uh, what you see. And uh, to give you an idea, for example, this one is uh, a figure study that I did this exact way. I just uh, sculpted from a, a reference where I had several angles of view. I sculpted mainly from this one point of view, just did a render with Montare in uh, Maya, and uh, just post-processed it in, uh, in Photoshop. And uh, I thought I... I, I I will do some kind of uh, of figure study for for this tutorial, but I get caught in a, as usually I get caught in a in a in a thought process in a creative process while doing it, and uh, I change my mind uh, at the composition time mainly. It was very uh, at the composition that I started to make association with current things I was uh, interested in, and uh, this is why I change. And I'll explain you why later I'm, I've done those two screenshots. And uh, it's very easy. It's because of the see-through feature in, in ZBrush. I, I'll cover that, uh, which uh, allow me to, to store a view of my model in uh, ZBrush and uh, to refer to it later to make sure my silhouette and my proportion were, were correct. So I had those, those two main uh, reference view. And uh, at some point when I, I wasn't sure that my, my script was uh, close enough to the reference, uh, I could uh, come back to, to those um, in transparency and just um, work on the silhouette. And uh, I'll show you that later. So this is where it started. Uh, next, I want to show you this painting, which is my absolute favorite painting at the moment. 
uh, I'm really fascinated by by this image. Uh, it's so it's so well composed. It's so it's so beautiful. There is an expression that is absolutely perfect on the on the character, and uh, there's there's everything I, I I admire in in painting in this image. And uh, I was very so fascinated by this image that I, I thought to make a study of it. And uh, because because uh, this image was in my mind at, at that moment, I uh, I obviously decided to 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 go for kind of of a mix of everything. It would be both a personal image, kind of a figure study, and also a style study from from this painting and uh, the painting of this of this very uh, time period. Uh, so at some point I decided to go for that and I, I started to collect more more references that was very talking to me. I, I really wanted to, to try to go for this uh, academic style um, anatomy. This one, same by Alexandre Cabanel too, as a, of, a, of an exceptional beauty. And I really wanted to try to, to find, to understand all those stylized curves we are working, you know. Oh, is this possible to cheat at this point with with anatomy, with 2D? Because if you were, I'm sure if you were to try to sculpt this exactly as it is, you know, if you would rotate it in space, most of this would not make any sense. Uh, I, I, I'm not completely sure of that. It, obviously, Alexandre Cabanel was such a master, I can't, I can't possibly be uh, up to the task to really understand what was happening in his mind. But I kind of feel it's something I discovered more and more in my work. 2D and 3D lies one to each other. You know, you can make something that works perfectly well in 3D, but once projected to a certain point of view, to a certain angle, it won't work. And it's the same thing the other way around. There is a tons of 2D artworks that mar that works very very well in 2D, but if you try to project it in a 3D space, that that won't work. And I really wanted to 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 understand those curves. They are absolutely fantastic. And this is another painting. Sorry, I, I think I opened it in Photoshop by mistake. This is another painting by by Jules Lefebvre. Uh, another French painter, uh, an academic French painter of the same era of the 19th century. And uh, I was also very, very fascinated by this anatomy. It's, it's so, it's so exaggerated, it's so stylized. And at the same time, it's so, so beautiful, it's so perfect. The curves are just all thoughts, all designed. So it works not at a figure, but as a, as a composition. So one, one of my, my, my main reference for, for this image. And uh, this was by uh, John William uh, Waterhouse. And um, I had it more for, for the mode, for the environment. Uh, to be honest, I didn't look too much at it. I came back to it a few times for more for the wrinkles in the <clears throat> in the toga and the, the overall mood, uh, the, the materials or the materials were rendered. And that's something I have started to to notice is in most of those paintings, um, reflective materials. If you want to match that reflection quality in Keyshot or in any rendering software, you have to use uh, very, very diffuse reflections. You know, you, you'll never find the hint of a windows, of a direct windows in those shadows, you know. Those reflections are either from a very blurry environment or from a diffuse, a very diffuse reflection.
uh, sorry for the weird noise. So another reference from Guillaume Seignac, so it's not of a very good quality, but uh, here I was more interested in the in the general proportion of the body, uh, and particularly in the implantation of the breast, which is a very high breast. Very, very beautiful painting too. Uh, those last two paintings, th th these are super high resolution paintings that I found. So uh, when I did my research on Google, I, I selected <coughs> very, very high res images. And what I was interested in was the surface quality because by the end I, I just wanted to push the thing just for the fun push the thing far enough to to add a bit of this uh, of this uh, wizard canvas quality you know I wanted to understand all the cracks were working and the the type of noise that you'll find in this uh, in this kind of images and uh, I use more this one because what I like in this one is it has both this um, this uh, weathered surface uh, quality, but at the same time it's uh, very um, it's very sharp. You know the the noise doesn't uh, impact too much uh, the, uh, the the image. And uh, you see it's it's super high res. I don't know it's maybe like eleven thousand pixel uh, wide. So you can really have a good idea of the surface quality. Um, later, when I started to to decide that uh, this figure study we would be in fact become a kind of a academic style painting uh, with the with a um, Greek, ancient Greek uh, theme. Um, I started to gather references. At that time, I was, <laughs> it's, it's a bit silly, I was, I was watching a Spartacus uh, series for the second time. And uh, so I decided to, to, to make research about uh, the ancient Thrace. And um, so those are uh, different um, Images that I that I gathered, looking for ancient race uh, helmet, ancient race um, armor, and so on, shields, weapons, glaive. Sorry for that. Um, I looked for furniture too. Those are not especially ancient Thrace furnitures. I don't know if we can historic historically go that far in uh, knowing the specificity of uh, those different uh, Greek area, Greek uh, Greek geographic area. Uh, but um, these were furnitures that I can I like I can like. This one was uh, my main reference for. For the furniture in, in the final image. Um, the other one I I was interested maybe in the in the coat and this white paint because I was wondering if having a white furniture would make sense in the context of the of the uh, in the historical context and uh, when I found this I say okay okay they they were knowing probably white paints uh, on furniture. So I won't be completely out of purpose by doing this. And this other, this other image by Alexandre Cabanel uh, use the same white paint on furniture, same white material. So it may be not paint. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure, in fact, it's not paint. It's probably marble. Uh, but anyway, it's white, and uh, I wanted a white value at uh, this place on my image, so it was perfectly okay for me. Those are different uh, ornamental patterns. 
Um, this one I, I made it from uh, from re reusing other assets. So I have to credit someone right away because I reused his work. So I want to show you. Okay. So I found this very interesting Greek ornamental vector and brushes by Nimakos on DeviantArt. So thank you, thank you guys for, for sharing this because uh, it was uh, very helpful to have uh, very clean patterns and uh, it uh, made me gain a lot of time uh, because uh, I wouldn't have designed that much those patterns. It would just have been copy, copy them from reality. So, so reusing is one of the main thing I'm, I, I'm doing. And uh, it really comes from my software background who basically in serious software engineering, uh, if you are writing twice the same algorithm, you're 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 a fool. You know, it's something that uh, you you should never never do unless you are concerned by um, efficiency or by security of an algorithm. But if something is al already written, you know, you you have to re re to reuse it. Sorry. So. Uh, for my images, I do a lot of re reusing when when it's possible. I'm reusing old assets, or I'm reusing free assets online. Uh, sometimes I'm I'm kit bashing, you know, free assets to, to create something new. Uh, reusing it is not only something that helped me to to gain time, but it's something that really helped me to come with. Uh, cool ideas I, I would never have without using them. So patterns, another, another pattern that I studied that I have been reusing. Not uh, exactly like this, but uh, I use that. Some other references, no. And um, here are those are my environments. References for the pillars. Uh, those are references that I use for for the sheets, and uh, some of them I use I use them uh, right uh, in the photo bashing phase, just to add details on top uh, of my sculpting. And uh, here I reference for the fur rug, fur rug. Sorry, it's kind of difficult to say for me with my nasty French accent. And uh, later in the, in the tutorial, uh, I just decided that the head was a mess and uh, I forgot to, to record the process. So you won't see the, the sculpting process, but uh, I decided first to, uh, I was about to make a study in fact. So I decided to make a study from this uh, Asina sculpture and uh, those two other references. And uh, this one is so so beautiful. I, I, I am almost in love with, with this uh, with this sculpture. And uh, so I sculpted a, a separate head. I, I I did a study, and I, finally I decided to to just uh, drop in in my in my uh, scene and uh, replace the the uh, old head by by the new one. And and because I use symmetry for for, for sculpting it, uh, I can I have to say that for that matter. Symmetry for faces is uh, is so much easier. And finally, the, the, the braid references that I use for, for the hair and uh, a few other laser things. So here are the the, uh, the references. And uh, mainly, I, I will come back to those those three paintings because really I was referring to those three paintings all the time during uh, different path of the making of the image and uh, uh, for me it's it's a great help to have to have a few few references but strong ones and that really helped me to to build on top of a uh, great artist work and um, someone can see it as cheating or as plagiarism maybe i don't know if it is for me for me art is a kind of a collective achievement anyway because uh, nothing of what we are doing today today would exist without uh, the the old masters